down one. Yes, um, I would need assistance in, at St. Henry High, District High School. Okay, what's going on? Um, I have a young man that is on the ground um, having trouble breathing. His eyes are a little bit rolled back. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew was, you know, the kind of kid that every parent could be proud of. He was that outgoing kid that wanted to be outside. He was great with Joseph as a big brother. He was kind of hard on Joseph. It was his first parenting experience, as I like to call it. Matthew, he always gave 110% of what he did. Um, he loved soccer. He had a passion for soccer. It was funny because he was fiercely competitive on the field, almost like a totally different kid on the playing field versus what he was outside of that. He had a love for nature, he loved turtles. Not sure exactly when the turtle thing started, it may have been when he accidentally caught one in the ocean one time and then he was fascinated by that. Even his gamer tag was turtle man lol. <laughs> so we have a lot of turtles around our house now. He always had a smile on his face, always joking around. He really was that all-American kid. We even had coaches tell us, they said, you know, we didn't know Matthew for very long, but he made an impact, so. On June 16th, you know, for me, it's still pretty vivid in my mind. It was your normal day. You know, we all got up and went to work. I got to see Matthew as he was walking out the door with his mom. Matthew was getting ready to attend his first soccer conditioning post-COVID. He was very excited, as I think all the kids were at that point. And again, he always gave 110%, which was no different that night. Matthew collapsed during conditioning. You get a phone call from Kim, and it is a frantic panic. You know, if you've never had this call, you don't understand the feeling, but it was just literally like the blood left my body because I knew you can just hear it in somebody's voice that it's not good. How long have you been out, been on the floor for about so, my ride, right away? So I, I would say 10 minutes now. As soon as, we called you as soon as it happened. Okay. Uh, we hear the ambulance. I said, all right, well, we're, let's go. So I yelled into the house. I put the dog up. I told Joseph, let's go. We're getting in the car right now. When we got to the hospital, we're in the trauma room. You know, they're working on Matthew. And after about 18 minutes, the treating physician turned around and looked at me. And even before he said that, the only thing that was going through my mind was is that parents should never have to bury a child. They were not able to resuscitate Matthew and Matthew passed away from sudden cardiac arrest that evening. We went from a family of four to a family of three in a matter of moments, and it was very difficult early on. There were five AEDs available on campus, but not one made it to Matthew until EMS arrived. So I think that's the biggest takeaway is that your son, daughter, niece, nephew, cousin, whoever it is, is playing, you know, we, we need a voice out there to advocate for our young athletes to ensure that their school, their club, they know when somebody collapses, what to look for, what needs to happen. The biggest thing with awareness around AED and CPR is it's simple and it's not something to be scared of. AEDs are automated electronic defibrillators, and they're automated for a reason. They are meant for the average person. The truth is, is we're losing a student athlete every three and a half days in the United States currently. Right now, out of hospital, sudden cardiac arrest survival rates are only 10%. That hasn't gotten any better even with AEDs. It needs to be built around the education side for people to be comfortable when they see a collapse, they react, the American Heart Association's awareness around this is bar none. Our goal is just to partner and help bring that awareness as a parent who has lost a child, you know, start to give a voice to this of the parents that have lost children to keep this from happening to another parent. I talk to Matthew all the time and I see signs of him everywhere. And I think that that's, you know, that's him saying, keep going, mom. We're in this together and you're doing a great job. 
And that's what gets me through as a mom, is to know that we can save another, another young athlete's life.